Today we're going to talk about nostalgia and why it's so big on dance floors lately. What is going on? I'm searching the Billboard Hot 100 and I'm trying to find songs that I'll play this weekend at a dance club. We're not ready for Olivia Rodrigo, maybe Doja Cat. Country was so big this summer that that made it really challenging for the club DJ. Then you had Taylor Swift. With the exception of perhaps Gunna and Dua Lipa right now in the charts, is there anything on here that you would dance to? How many of these songs fill today's dance floor? Not many by when I push play, I'll be honest. Unless there's a really interesting remix that keeps their attention. Today's pop music has not resonated with mainstream audiences yet. And to be honest with you, I hear that conversation a lot among DJs. New music is just not as good as it used to be. In episode 93 of the American Psychological Association, Christine Bacho says, Historical nostalgia suggests it's more likely triggered by dissatisfaction with the present. If people are unhappy for any reason with how things are today, they're more likely than to experience this sense that things must have been better in the past. I do have a theory about why we're not dancing into today's new music. It's because we haven't formed memories around that or had a communal bond with lyrics or dance moves. I feel we need to participate listening to a song together for us to form a memory behind it. Usually when you hear a song, your mind goes back to a time and place. And we haven't had that time or place yet with Doja Cat or Olivia Rodrigo. Some have, not everybody has. It took nearly 15 to 20 years for Taylor Swift to finally be crowned queen. The mainstream audiences take a long time to warm up to anything new lately. That's why it's so hard for Hollywood to even come out with anything original. They always have to go back and help you find things that you knew and loved. And this might be where the overwhelm of abundance begins to kick in. It was reported on ToneIsland.com that Spotify uploads 60,000 new tracks every day. But those were 2022 numbers. Now, in May of 2023, there are 120,000 new tracks hitting music streaming services each and every day. Common gripe is, if you don't know your music, you're not a real DJ. How can you possibly find the time for all of those songs? I'm sorry. It's too much. And that could be one of the reasons why DJs are resorting to the tested classics. Billboard.com reports that pop stars are simply not being signed by labels nearly as much as they used to. In the 2000s, you could make a buck off of selling a CD or a vinyl. Streaming came along and knocked that out of the way. In the 2010s, the only way to survive was to go big and lavish with your tour performances. You heard in the 2010s that it was no longer about album sales, but more about their touring, how much they could make off of the merch. Even Miley Cyrus herself didn't make a dime. And yet there were still some artists who had to bootstrap it and cross their fingers that seats would sell. TikTok... This platform has made it so much easier for older songs to resurface and go viral. The nostalgia effect is amplified when millions engage with a classic track. So here's my fear. The communal sense of dancing together has moved to that communal experience online. During the pandemic, this was our only dance floor back in 2020. And now that tradition carries on. The younger generation is now having an appreciation for classic music as it's being fostered by TikTok. My daughter, who's 13 years old, was absolutely convinced that when the Queen movie came out, this was brand new music. And in reality, it is for her. And we have to respect that we have a brand new audience here to appreciate that. The best part is, you're the one who gets to push play on it and see the reaction. More importantly, how can a DJ navigate through all this? I really feel, in my heart of hearts, that the DJ may no longer be the tastemaker. We lost that crown a long time ago when streaming channels took over. And actual algorithms and research data replaced our need to report back how well it did on a dance floor. But that's okay. There will always be a need for a person to create the mood, an MC to articulate what happens next, to bring them the energy that they need, and more importantly, to establish that new memory. DJs are capitalizing on this. Like here in Nashville, there's a golden era EDM dance party that I'm looking forward to seeing. It's so important that you send your audience out smiling. Yes, you've heard those songs so many times throughout your career, but each time you perform, find more unique ways to blend out or get creative with those stems and find inventive ways that are uniquely you. You'll always have the occasional new song that you can bring in and 
I promise it won't always be stale if you force yourself to be creative. Is there any other suggestions or observations that perhaps you've come across? I would love to hear your input, especially from all points of the globe. This is what we're experiencing here in America. I would love to see how audiences are reacting worldwide. That's the beauty of this YouTube channel. Talking to DJs all over the world about music that matters and how to fill those floors. I'm Aaron Trailer with the Crate Hackers. Don't forget we are an amazing community of DJs that come together to discuss music daily. And we serve up charts and crates for all types of parties and occasions. It's the most fun and innovative way to discover music and to build crates fast. For hanging out with us today, I'm going to give you seven days to try it out. That's seven free days of the Crate Hacker software for Windows or Mac. You'll find that link in the YouTube comments below. And speaking of YouTube, please click subscribe, hit like if you found this video helpful or entertaining. I'll catch you on the next one. Happy hacking.